Skillet members. We're now joined by Jack Eden from Eden Villas in Sri Lanka. Um, what we'll be going through together is through, I think, very interesting insights for uh, people who have vacation rentals, uh, holiday rentals, um, uh, maybe in, on islands, in, in Southeast Asia, in Asia, but actually wherever you are in the world with a property management business. We'll be talking about, um, of course, the conditions in Sri Lanka now, which are different from what you probably experience in other parts of the world. Uh, but we're talking about the business, what it's like to have a villa business in Sri Lanka. And Jack has the biggest villa on the island, so he's pretty experienced with that. Um, speaking of experience, we'll also be talking about you know, what it's like to have a resilient business. Uh, we'll also be talking about um, what's happening right now on the market. Who would be uh, maybe the first people to come back and what is Jack doing to capture the, this demand? So without further ado, Jack, um, welcome and how are you? Hi, Bowen, everybody. Hi, Bowen means uh, long life in Singular and is, is even more appropriate these days. So welcome and, and long life to everybody. Um, I, we're, we're good here, thanks, Peter. So um, um, thank you for watching me a long life. I mean, I, I, it's, it's a good blessing to have. And I think it, it's an it's a interesting signal because we'll be talking as well as about having a, a, a business that does last. So um, you, how, for how long have you been in Sri Lanka? And, and can you tell me more bit about your business there? Sure, absolutely. Can I, can I just start by saying that uh, I, I recognize that the situation that each of us are facing is slightly unique. We're all at different stages of the curve. Uh, we've all had different experiences and we've all had different messages coming to us. So what I say over the next 20 minutes or so will be very specific to Sri Lanka um, because that is, that is the field I'm in. So uh, apologies to everybody if, if there are some areas of irrelevance, but I hope there's some, some areas that you can, you can resonate with. Um, I came to Sri Lanka with my wife and children in 1998 from Hong Kong. And we carried out a, a very typical sort of tourist uh, triangle of the, of, the, of the island and just, just fell in love with it. And I had the opportunity through being made redundant from the company I was with a month later. And we, so we decided to move back. And within a year of moving here, we had bought a small house uh, in Gaul, in the, in the Dutch fort of Gaul. And um, after that, uh, over the next sort of five years or so, uh, a steady stream of um, foreign investors came down and bought property. And it was just uh, a, an obvious apparent business to look after those properties for people. Mm. Um, there's been various, various changes over the last 20 years to the foreign purchase uh, law in this country, sometimes easier, sometimes more difficult. Um, but it has led to you know, a large group of foreign investors buying properties uh, along the coast. The market now is in the luxury sector, which is a sector that we, we focus on exclusively. There are about 150 or so, um, currently more being built and, and, and so on. And we've got about a 20% share of that along, along the South Coast. We pretty much exclusively focus on the South Coast of Sri Lanka. Um, and um, and that's how we started, and, and this is this is where we are at the moment. And, and, and these uh, these these houses are they mostly pure investment, or are they actual sort of homes of people? What's it like? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, uh, I mean, no, nobody. It, it's an interesting one to answer because nobody nobody obviously buys a house to lose money. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I think it's fair to say that of the sector that we focus in, um, nobody nobody actually needs the rental income that's generated from it to take out of Sri Lanka um, to try and boost their own, their own incomes overseas. Um, a lot of the income, of course, does go to washing the face of the villa in this country. Uh, and once construction has occurred, costs whilst rising um, have, been, have been fairly low so that a fairly minimal amount of weeks in the calendar year would, would cover cost. Mm. Um, and that's the general situation we're in. So it's, it's, and even the, 
that the villas themselves tend to be sort of standalone properties or fairly unique. Um, there is no um, villa development um, of, of, uh, of, of standard, standard built villas uh, at all in Sri Lanka at the moment. Something we, we've talked about with um, other property managers in Bali, for example, yeah. uh, is that whenever you're in Bali, of course, you have to be ready to, um, uh, to be flexible in a way that, you know, with a volcano can erupt. It does happen, right? And suddenly for weeks, and you know, it's going to stop and, you, and flights don't, don't land and you have to uh, get this, this, the, the guests out one way or another, driving them to Java anyway. So um, it means... This kind of resiliency that that's I think some maybe property managers have built into their business, and I guess Sri Lanka as well, obviously with the, the history of the island or the tsunami, for example, that's something you've seen all, all these years. So what? So can you maybe take us through a few of these events, and what does it uh, led you lead you to? Um, what did it lead you to to do for your business in terms of of costs, for example? Right. Yeah, I, I think we've had we've had more than our fair share of, of disasters. Um, you mentioned the tsunami in 2004. Uh, we then had the civil war, which really kicked, which which been simmering for well, been very aggressive actually for 30 years. But in in 2006, there was a change of government, and they were determined to prosecute and end the war. And so the fighting got really vicious. 2006, seven, eight. It, it, it was declared peace in, in April of 2009. Um, then the international politics uh, was very negative towards the government at that time. And so international media was very aggressive. Um, and then we had flood, massive floods of 2016. Uh, and then we had a terrorist attack in 2019. Uh, and now, now we're in this current situation. So, um, We've always been fairly lean in terms of overheads, both in villas and, and for, for us in the, in the management company. Um, we, we run a very tight ship. Um, we've never had an had a, um, overexpansion of, of individuals working in the office. Um, we've always asked people to do multiple tasks. Um, and so when we're faced with, with another situation, albeit, albeit one as significant as this one on, on future earnings, um, we haven't had to cut staff at all. Uh, we have asked all of our staff to return to salaries of 2019. Mm. So we, we, we reduced the, the salary increase we gave for 2020. Um, but apart from that, we've maintained current, current workload. Um, with, within the villas, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the rental income is desired to cover the cost of the villa. Mm. And it only really needed to rent on a fairly short uh, period in a calendar year for, for the villa to cover its costs. So even in most of the villas, um, we've maintained staffing levels at what they were pre, pre-February. Um, some owners who've obviously been affected in their, in their home country, we've had to cut costs. And there we've asked staff to uh, either take pay cuts for reduced hours or we've, or we've had to let one or two go. Um, but, but generally speaking, we've managed to look after all the people that, that are with us. Usually still staff is attached to a, a specific villa, right? That, that's the way it works. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we, we don't have a central staffing um, situation. Our, our villas are about 120 kilometers apart uh, and so each villa has its own dedicated uh, team uh, which would include which would include a chef so um, even so even even when there's no occupancy you know the chef is sitting there and the chef is helping out um, it's a bit of a challenge to get a chef to do the cleaning but you know we've we've managed to do it um, and uh, other than that, within the villas, we, we've, we've cut the, what we consider to be um, non-essential items mm-hmm. when villas are not occupied. So um, p- pest control, for instance, we've reduced the number of times we do that. Um, pool maintenance. Uh, maintenance contractors, we have asked for discounts, further discounts on, on every maintenance contract that we, that we have ongoing at the moment. 
uh, security. Uh, we've reduced numbers of security personnel. Uh, Sri Lanka is mostly, in fact, the whole country is in a nighttime curfew. Mm. Um, so whilst uh, incursions, incursions into a property can occur, we've reduced down from, from two security guards down to one. Um, and the saving, the saving of that kind of thing is quite significant. But the largest single cost uh, facing a villa in Sri Lanka is, is in fact electricity. Um, unit charge in this country is very high. And so with, without the electricity and air conditioners being on the full time, uh, that cost has come down quite a lot on its own. Um, so that's helped enormously. I can, ima- I can imagine. That's, that's very interesting. And I think, uh, I think that a few weeks, well, a few good weeks of, of, of uh, renting could cover the costs. And, and so let's hope you're going to have more weeks uh, to come. But for that, maybe let's, let's, let's try to understand. So um, you, start, you start talking about the, the, uh, the lockdown in Sri Lanka and, and there's probably already a path you know, out of this. So what do you think is going to happen in terms of like measures taken for you know, uh, incoming travelers and who would be the first ones to come back? Okay. Um, that's, that's a little bit of crystal ball gazing, I, I find. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I, I've, we've never been in this situation before, or none of us, obviously, where we can, we can follow a, a, a trajectory of something that happened before. Like, like, for instance, with the bombs of last year, we oh. knew roughly what sort of recovery period of time was going to be because of places like Bali that had, that had unfortunately had them before. This one, uh, it, it's impossible to know, but I think there seems to be general consensus that international travel is going to be the last to recover. Uh, in Sri Lanka, the airport is closed. Uh, there is a, um, a comment by the government that they're going to open it in, in July, but that may, that may change. Uh, and when, when uh, tourists come, they're going to have to br- bring the COVID report that they don't have it, uh, or uh, an antibody test showing that they have had it, uh, and they will have temperature checks on arrival, as well as um, luggage, clothing, and, and body disinfectant, um, which, which, sounds, which sounds quite scary, actually. Uh, you know? And so and, until those things are perfectly clear and we've all seen other people go through it, we, do, we don't think we're going to get much, if any, international travel. And so we've had to look at the domestic market, um, which, which pretty much I think every all of us are doing, uh, and we've had to and um, we've had to generate that market because there, there largely it isn't really one in existence in Sri Lanka to our sector. Um, the sort of middle mid mid level is much more of where where the market currently is, uh, and and uh, the Sri Lanka market is, uh, are more in tune to going to or, or were anyway more in tune to going to a hotel, uh, a sort of luxury hotel who have been already advertising pretty significant discounts. Um, so we will, we will take the view that we need to have the villas occupied in order for the staff to be uh, busy and uh, incentivized, and also for the villas to be being maintained, looked after and kept in a, in a, good, in a good shape. And we will focus on that more than we will focus on income. Um, the, the value of the rental will be based on the cost of delivering the product. Um, and we will at all times obviously try to cover that. But even in situations where we just marginally fall short of covering costs, we'll probably, be, probably still take the booking. Um, in order to try to appeal, sorry, Tiba, sorry, did you go, want to? Go, go, go ahead, Jack, of course, go okay. ahead. I'm just going to say, in order to try to appeal to uh, to, to to the local market, uh, we have um, we, we're advertising cleaning protocols, um, which are pretty much government led, um, where um, we will we will demonstrate to potential guests what we're doing, how we're doing it, how how the villa is kept clean, um, what protective clothing the staff will be wearing. Mm. How much of the, how many of the staff come out and come in on a daily basis? Most of the villas have staff accommodation, 
And so if a guest wants to, staff can actually stay there for the duration of the guest uh, stay and not go out at all. And so we're just trying to be, trying to be as flexible as we can um, in terms of the service, in terms of the service that we give. And also maybe uh, uh, you talked about a, a crystal ball, so it's very hard, of course, to predict uh, the, the international countries, international, uh, where the international travelers will be coming from. But maybe to have a rough idea, like the last few years, what were the main sources of, uh, of, of travelers that you, you would be getting? Yeah, for, for us, predominantly coming out of the UK, uh, and increasingly, uh, it was ex expats living in Southeast Asia and living in the Middle East. And we are, uh, you know, I, I believe that countries are going to try and do sort of um, d deals with each other that, you know, we, we've contained it, you've contained it, let our people travel to one another. Um, if that's the case, then the Middle East has been pretty successful. Sri Lanka has been very successful, um, if, if that's the right word. Uh, we've had a thousand, just over a thousand cases in the country with sadly nine, nine people have died. Um, and the outbreaks that are occurring now are contained. Um, and so we, we probably expect um, people to come out of Hong Kong. You know, there's, there's other things going in Hong Kong now that we all know that will probably drive people out. Uh, Singapore uh, and um, the UAE. Um, those are fairly short haul flights. Mm. Long haul is is the UK for us, and we we expect that'll that'll take quite a bit of time to come back. I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, um, thanks a lot for all these these insights, and uh, I think it's very interesting because it really enables us to, uh, well, me at least, <laughs> to discover what the market is like here and uh, what what you're doing, and also to understand a bit more. Um, What's going to happen because this is all this is also a regional conference so i can imagine that people watching here from you know, southeast asia and think oh yeah that's true we we do have these connections maybe maybe our markets will be the first ones who have travelers going from one place to the other and so if people want to know more about your your your, your properties your company or or re reach you what's the best way to get a hold of you uh we have um uh well either, either the website or our social media or, or direct on the phone. Um, very happy to communicate with anyone and build build up our community. So it's it's a uh, village in Sri Lanka .com, right? The, the website. Uh, vi vi uh, actually, it's Eden Villas in Sri Lanka. Eden Villas in Sri Lanka, uh, which is shortened to E V I N S L dot com. Okay, good. Okay, I will make sure we put the right link under I'll, the, I'll, the I'll video to get things easier for people. Yeah. Once again, thank you so much for your time and for your insights. And uh, yeah, I wish you a, a great day in Sri Lanka. Thanks, Thibault. And I, I will want everybody a long life. Thank you.